Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. This is a View from the North with Dr. Ken Rogers joining us from Kelowna, British Columbia. We're going to talk about how would Canada be affected by a U.S. dictatorship, which is what Trump is threatening. So I guess the question is, is there a level of urgency among the people that you talk with in Canada about what is going on uh, as we approach the November 2024 election? Well, as a generalization, uh, most of the Canadian public's pretty apathetic. Uh, they don't follow too much what's going on. Uh, as a generalization, uh, the most Canadians don't believe that uh, Americans would be dumb enough to vote Trump back in. It's true. You know, I mean, I talk to people all day and they say, I can't believe the country would be dumb enough to vote for Trump. And yet, the polls are good. His base is strong. And he himself is uh, he's undaunted. Uh, he's undaunted by, you know, uh, whatever problems he has in court, which are m many, and whatever problems he has in, you know, in governing, which are many. So here we are with the, the, the logical possibility that he could very well win. So for this discussion, I guess first I'd like to ask it. You know, you're in British Columbia, it's Western Canada. Um, do people favor Trump over Biden? Do, is there, a, is there a, you know, any kind of, uh, you know? No, there, there's strong feeling favoring Biden. Canadians think that, you know, the U.S. economy is performing fantastically well. And normally, you know, the economics affect uh, how everybody votes. Um, you know, the the U.S. is the only uh, uh, major country who's not suffering, uh, you know, let's call it a recession or near there, too. Uh, you know, certainly Canada isn't doing as well as the U.S. So, so we, you know, when I look at the polls and chat with a few people that, uh, that are quite knowledgeable, uh, they say, well, other than his age, what? does anybody have as a problem with Biden? I mean, when he's before the mic, he sounds as lucid as ever. Uh, you know, I know lots of people his age and older that have no great problems mentally. You know, they may limp along, but, <laughs> you know, with some physical ailment, but generally, uh, you know, their mind is still pretty crisp. How about his, his rhetoric? You know, there are people who say, we, we want him to speak up. Uh, we want him to respond to Trump's crazy statements um, and Republican crazy statements. We want him to be stronger in terms of his public appearances. Do they talk about that? Uh, no, there's a, there are um, oh, a fair number of Canadians who are, you know, far to the right, similar to Trump's base and who believe you know, some of the BS on all of the um, uh, news media that gets, or let's call it not news, the fake news that they seem to watch or listen to, you know, so that, um, uh, you know, it's not like, you know, there's even in Canada, there's even people that, uh, you know, are climate change deniers. And so when you listen to Trump say, uh, you know, drill, 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 or whatever his new punchline is, aside from he'll be a dictator for sure, you know, uh, starting on day one, it didn't, doesn't say ending. <laughs> but, um, uh, <clears throat> you know, the, the uh, generalization is that, um, you know, Trump would be a catastrophe for Canada. I mean, the, the Canada... The border from Maine to Washington State is about 4,000 miles long. And in addition to that, there's another 1,500 miles of border between Alaska and Canada. You know, so it's 5,500 miles. So, so whatever happens in the United States uh, affects Canada dramatically. Um, yeah, it's the same like language or the media crosses the border, um, people cross the border, trade crosses the border, um, and the culture is not that different. Um, on the other hand, um, you know, our, what do you want to call it, political bubble, our congressional 
medic uh, is really limited to a national scope mostly. And I, and I wonder, I mean, we were talking a minute ago about Western Canada, how they feel, how people that you talk to feel. What about Eastern Canada? Is it the same or different there? How do they feel about Trump and the Republicans? I think they're pretty consistent all the way across Canada. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. I, now, Eastern Canada, you've got to remember there's the province of Quebec, which is quite different from anything else in North America. You know, the majority of Quebecers speak French. Um, virtually all Quebecers can speak both like French and English, but, uh, you know, they, <clears throat> they have a lot of different rules and attitudes. The politics different? Um, uh, you know, would they be more likely to support Trump than the others? No, probably mm. less. Mm. Okay. So, uh, you know, I want to focus, uh, if you will, on um, his comment that he would um, he would be a dictator on day one. And of course, that's a it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a word play is what it is. Um, my guess is what he really means is that on day one, he will change everything. Um, he will he has a he has a little list <laughs> right out of the Mercado. He has a little list. And he has a, a playbook, which he is working on now, um, which he has revealed in part, um, which he will implement uh, on that very day, all together now, everything that he wants to do as president, he will do that day, including wreck the government. Um, so I wonder if people in Canada, some, some people in the U.S. understand this, recognize it as, you know, as a, a horrible result. Other people don't. They uh, they seem to think that it'll be okay, um, that he's not going to be any worse than he was in the first term. But I think it's clear that he will be, and and that he'll populate the government, um, you know, with with his uh, uh, accessories, um, you know, in every corner of the government, and they will be completely loyal to him, much more so than before. He will not tolerate any disloyalty the next time around. So, you know, it does lead to, to dictatorship, and he as much as said so. He must throw out the Constitution, the rule of law, the notion of democracy, all that. As I wonder, you know, and there are some people in this country, including present company, um, you know, who, who feel this is, this is really a tremendous threat to the United States. But are there people in Canada who feel, A, that it's a threat to the United States, and B, that it's somehow a threat to Canada. Well, the intelligent people I talk to think that, um, you know, if Trump wins uh, the democracy, it, as it's now known in the United States, will end, um, you know, and pretty quickly. Uh, your comment about um, uh, reducing some of the uh, government departments to just mere skeletons of what they are now and that the heads of all, all of those reduced departments uh, would be you know trump loyalists uh, um, you know who salute whatever he salute and says yes sir whenever he gives a an order or a suggestion um i think it'll take a little while for him to to implement his revenge strategy, but it would be fairly quick to to take over the Justice Department, the FBI, and the Tax Department, and then those three could certainly implement pretty quickly you know, a lot of the revenge that he would like to have. Um, you know, but when you take the Justice Department in particular, then you eliminate the rule of law. So it's like you know, what happened in Navalny in Russia. You know, he just disappeared. You know, well, you know, just because somebody says, well, I'll get my day in court, well, you may not. You know, in a dictatorship, you you don't get that sort of thing. You know, and, and um, uh, I don't think it, uh, very few people in Canada have, have come to serious thinking about what would the effect on Canada be if Trump did win. Well, I, you know, let's and break he it did down. implement 
and he did implement some of these things. Well, when you got, you know, the first thing is, um, you know, what happens at the border? You know, right now there's an awful lot of traffic going both ways across the border. Um, you know, that uh, whether you, you know, if you're taking a winter vacation from somewhere in Canada that that is cold, like Edmonton, Alberta, and you want to go to Mexico, you know, you got to fly over the United States. Is that even permitted? You know, <laughs> and, and in a lot of ways, you know, comparing the U.S. and Canada is a little bit like uh, I was thinking of the dispute between Venezuela and Guyana, you know, where Guyana is the little guy, you know, and its military right might compared to Venezuela is diddly squat. You know, and if Venezuela says, well, we just want to take two thirds of your territory, uh, and thank you. You know, well, there there was actually a few, you know, joke videos that somebody made up on AI uh, showing, you know, Trump speaking about, uh, you know, well, what would he like to do for Canada? Well, first thing you do, take Alberta and then Saskatchewan. Well, that, you know, that, I, that's a very interesting point, because um, say first thing, but uh, the first thing would be little things, right? Little incursions on Canada. Uh, well, actually, the first thing would be the wall. You finish the wall. Well, at, oh, at the, wall, uh, the wall in, in Mexico. Yeah, in Mexico. I don't, second... I don't think anybody would be dumb enough to try to build one <laughs> five, <laughs> five and a half thousand miles, especially between parts of Alaska and, and, <laughs> and those parts of Canada. Uh, like anybody who's taken a, a cruise uh, along the British Columbia coast up to Alaska would recognize that there's a mountain range really close to the coast that has some huge glaciers on it. Know, where are you going to build a wall? <laughs> the glacier, <laughs> glacier straddles uh, the, the Canada-U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. border in that place and, and for a lot of Alaska. But, um, you know, you're going to have a major mess. you got major rivers that run, you know, uh, back and forth. For example, uh, you know, the most important river on the west side of the U.S. is the Columbia. Well, most of that water arises in Western Canada. Uh, you know, you. but when you take what are the items where Trump was a problem in the past, which may be his first picks this time, he certainly didn't like NAFTA or the U.S.-Canada-Mexico trade agreement. He, you know, it seemed to be he reluctantly accepted what was done. Well, if he's back in office, that would be back on the plate. Well, he may just start with saying, we're just not going to respect the agreement as is. There's not much Mexico and Canada can do about it. Yeah, that's you know, the kind of thing. I mean, so he's not going to he's not going to take British Columbia, not right away, um, but he, he will, you know, nibble at issues. Well, that's the only way benefits. you could connect to That's the only way you could connect to Alaska. Yes. You see, if you, if you want to, if you want to get uh, Washington State, uh, Idaho, and Montana, so that they can connect directly to Alaska, you need to, you need to take uh, most of Western Canada. You know, British Columbia, Alberta, and the Yukon, the Yukon Territories, north of British Columbia. Most Americans wouldn't know where it is. <clears throat> You know, I th don't you think that the uh, Canadian-American border would change legally, conceptually? Tell me how you think it might change. Uh, well, one of the first things would probably be a lot more Americans um, uh, wanting to uh, just move to Canada and in a hurry. Um, you know, I don't know if uh, people who you know, would be on Trump's threat, you know, revenge list, you know, but they may prefer to go to Europe to feel safer than just because Canada's too close, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but um, the um, uh, the border, 
uh, now has an awful lot of of day traffic, like people, for example, in, in Detroit, a very large portion of the hospitals in Detroit are, are manned by medical people that live right across the river in Canada. You know, it's just, I don't know why it's just seems to be such a huge percentage of medical staff. Well, what happens? Uh, you know, like you just have an unknown factor, but you also have thousands of Canadians go across the border to the U.S. And a lot of these border towns depend on their purchasing power. You know, for example, immediately between Seattle and Vancouver, you know, there's an awful lot of of um, traffic where the Vancouver end or just north of the border, Canadians drive across to the nearest uh, sizable town, which is called Bellingham in that case, and, and, and they do certain kinds of shopping where there are items, selected items that are cheaper in the U.S. than they are in Canada. And then, you know, they're back. Well, those small cities all all across the U.S. Canadian border all depend on that business. And it's pretty huge. Um, now, Canada, like the U.S. international trade, everybody thinks is pretty large. But as a percentage of the U.S. economy, it's just about the smallest in the world. You know, where Canada is just about the opposite. You know, we have just a huge percentage of our, you know, gross national product is is uh, exports or imports. Well, that, you know, actually suggests two things. It, it suggests that Canada is, uh, I guess we knew this, dependent in many ways on the U.S. in terms of trade and, um, you know, the transfer of resources. Um, but on the other hand, it also suggests that if Trump wanted to take advantage of Canada, if he wanted to demand concessions, if he wanted to force Canada to do this or that on some kind of trade or geopolitical basis, uh, he would have huge leverage against Canada and Trudeau and the parliament and all that, simply because of Canada's dependence. And it's not below him to do that. Do you agree? Yes. but. There's already examples of that in in terms of most trade or other relations between the United States and either Mexico or Canada. The U.S. has always been a bully. The U.S. never does play really, really fair. And a, a wonderful example would be the softwood lumber. You know, the under NAFTA and the U.S., the whatever they call the agreement now, um, <clears throat> you know, there's been uh, several times that that dispute has been uh, gone to the tribunal and they've always done it in Canada's favor. And then the U.S. just says, so what? We're going to impose great big tariffs on softwood lumber coming from Canada. Uh, anyhow. <laughs> um, yeah. Now you can take sure tariffs. Tariffs are a way to impose your will on your neighbor, your trading partner, right? Yeah. That's but to you know you have um, um, you know you you know the biggest dollar item in uh, aside from automobiles, uh, parts and stuff going back and forth, but mainly between Southern Ontario and in the U.S. Uh, is uh, energy. Mm. You know, well, the energy is certainly a favorite area for Trump. And, uh, and you know, the essence of energy, Canada exports an awful lot of natural gas to the U.S. that you use. But also, uh, now that you have LNG being shipped around the world, um, you know, one of the big changes in relation between Canada and the U.S. on trade has been that Canada's sending natural gas to the U.S., which is shipping it to the ports, converting it to LNG, and shipping it out. 
Um, now that that's a very large plum. You know those those natural gas uh, conversion plants uh, that convert the gas into LNG and ship it. Um, you know they're mega size billion dollar projects. Um, you know one of the keys as to why the U.S. economy is doing so much better than than everybody else in the world right now. You know all the infrastructure bill and you know the LNG uh, played such a dominant role in in creating jobs and and you know in increasing uh, productivity. Well, that actually raises an interesting question. Um, some say that um, you know Biden. Well, I mean, including you and me, say that Biden done a good job with the economy. Uh, he may not get credit for it. He may not. He doesn't. You know, he doesn't seek all that much credit for it, but credit where credit is due, he's done a good job with the economy, jobs and infrastructure and and the, and the like. But let's suppose for a, for a minute that Trump becomes uh, president and he acts like a dictator and he does everything on his own um, without good advice and the economy of the United States falters, which I think is a real possibility given our isolationist direction these days. So query, you know, what does a falter in the American economy mean to Canada? Um, will Canada follow uh, rack and pinion on, uh, on a decline in the U.S. economy? Well, if the U.S. Uh, gets a sniffle, Canada gets a cold. If the U.S. gets a cold, Canada gets pneumonia. You know, it, it's really... <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, we probably have, um, I don't know what percentage of, of the trade that Canada has is with the U.S., but it's probably um, over half. Hmm. The other thing I, I wanted to uh, ask you about is, is, the, is the culture wars issues that uh, Trump will undoubtedly endorse. Um, and we, we ultimately we have to talk today about um, you know his his threat on on the press and um, and the lawyers and the politicians who uh, criticize him. That's another issue. But um, seems to me that you know we have racism in this country. Um, we have this crazy thing about a, a abortion. We have this crazy thing about um, you know, guns um, and so forth and schools and. You know, not letting kids read books, and gee whiz, I could go on. Um, and I and I don't know the level to which um, the dark side of those issues has permeated the Canadian, you know, uh, country and culture. Um, but I wonder if things get worse here um, with issues like that. Do you think that they would have an effect on the issues like that in Canada? Well, certainly, the, if you take abortion, which I think is one of the key reasons why most Canadians think Trump will lose, <laughs> is, uh, you know, there's no question that nobody would even bring up the idea of abortion ban anywhere in Canada. Most of the things that I think would happen where, where the social problems in the U.S. will arise, like the abortion question. Are we then going to get a whole bunch of of Americans coming to Canada to get abortion? Or are you they may, just you going may to very move? well. Okay, I think that's going to you, happen now. Yes, but if you think of well, because Canada is closer, but but maybe their U.S. health care won't pay, and there's still lots of really good U.S. states where they can go to and and get good health care. But your your social things you got. The attack on women's rights, the attack on the LGBTQ community, where, you know, Canada's more liberal in, uh, than the U.S. on that issue as well. You know, Trump last time tried to put in a Muslim ban. I would assume that would be fairly high on his list. I mean, we have... Um, you know, areas in Canada, for example, one of the, the, the large boroughs of Vancouver, or let's call it 
sub-communities called Surrey. Well, nearly 50% of that, munis that municipal part of Vancouver is Muslim. You know, we got another one called Richmond that's Chinese. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Vancouver's a pretty cosmopolitan place. However, that would attract a lot of Americans. You know, if, if you know, they see the Trump actions as, as as dangerous as I think they would be, you know, Canada might be a, a pretty good choice for an awful lot of people. Now, you think you think that his policies and these mm, cultural wars that we have in this country would creep over the border and somehow infect um, a Canadian government, a Canadian institutions? In other words, would we have Islamophobia in Canada to kind of copycat what we have here? Would we have an increase in anti-Semitism in Canada like we have here? And like I think will happen under him. Um, does this sort of thing uh, of concern? Uh, well, I hadn't thought about it because it normally would not be at all a concern in Canada. I, I think the uh, you know anti-Muslim or Islamophobia has always existed to some degree in Canada, and and remains in existence uh, you know uh, uh, you know i pick you know major districts where there's a big mixture of of recently arrived muslims uh, as opposed to you know long term canadians that have lived in the neighborhood and you know you get some tension between them um the um <clears throat> other um factors though i think canada on the lgbtq thing is it is going to change i don't see if america becomes far more anti jewish which would really surprise me you know because you know having uh, lived in new york i cannot find that hard to believe uh, um you know that i think the jewish population is just such a strong major contributing part of the U.S. economy. Um, and I don't think Trump has any anti-Jewish inclinations, even though a lot of his followers might. Um, but, uh, you know, the elimination of major parts of the U.S. government, you know, would be, you know, the item that would cause the most disruption. Um, now. You know, I don't see him not doing a bunch of government spending, you know, but if you don't have the the staff to do it, if you're going to eliminate the FBI, what's going to happen to your, you know, drug problems and, you know, and other criminal matters? Um, the, you know, you just have a big mess. I mean, I, I it's really hard to comprehend what the consequences of Trump being in and converting the U.S. into a, a you know, autocracy or a dictatorship, would, what it would be like, and especially with a dictator that's, that's uh, half insane in the first place. Well, you know, query, uh, we have uh, Justin Trudeau right now. Um, I, I wouldn't put him in those categories. Um, however you like or don't like his policies. Um, but uh, maybe it's the next, um, you know, prime minister. Um, and maybe the next uh, generation of leaders around the provinces, maybe they will move to the right. Maybe they will see what Trump is doing to minimize government or, or destroy government institutions, um, destroy democracy, destroy the rule of law. And they will say, gee, I can make myself more powerful if I follow his lead. And maybe there will be some traction in Canada, just the way there has been traction in the U.S. You think this is possible or likely? Uh, very possible, because in fact, um, you know, uh, Trudeau has become very unpopular in Canada, you know, and not unreasonably in my mind. Uh, you know, I'm a little biased, uh, but... Uh, 
you know, it's really that he's done nothing. Um, and um, he spent a lot of money, but to really accomplish nothing with it uh, um, and has a bunch of policies that most Canadians do not like. Um, our gross domestic, our GDP per capita has been going down for three or four years where the U.S. has gone up, you know, especially in the last year or two with uh, Biden's uh, infrastructure bill, et cetera. However, the main opposition party in Canada is a conservative party. You know, they have been in power over the years, but not for the last, uh, you know, eight years or, not, or 10 years. Um, but uh, they are more popular right now. And part of it is they, they spit out a few of these Trump-type policies. They're certainly more right-wing than their predecessors in that party. Uh, but they're, they're really not much right of the U.S. Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is that is they're not they're not very right wing they just they have a few of these scary policies but they certainly wouldn't wouldn't even dream of of having uh, an abortion ban you know they do not have canada does not have does not have a big evangelical base mm. you know the, like one of the quandaries to anybody here is how could uh, you know evangelicals support trump it just seems contradictory well he breaks every religious rule in the book but you know i wanted to ask you about about um isolationism because what we have is this populist isolationism under trump and even without trump that seems to be the u.s is moving in that direction but i always felt that uh, canada as a former member of the commonwealth and all that uh canada that that has its you know its its legal roots, um, you know, its societal root, roots, if you will, not only in the UK, um, but lots of immigrants to Canada from lots of places. It's a very diverse, you know, global society, and especially from Eastern Europe, which is under such threat these days, like Ukraine, for example. And I wonder if the notion of isolationism uh, would be popular uh, would catch on from what Trump is doing, uh, will do, um, to the civil society of Canada? Well, you'd first have to get the isolationist trend has been, you know, sort of North America, not, not just U.S. only. Like the U.S. has really pushed for the um, uh, simplifying supply lines, bring supply lines closer to home because it was supply disruptions that really, you know, caused the mess, you know, following COVID and created the inflation that, you know, caused the economic problems that uh, we're still unraveling. Uh, <clears throat> but the, um, the, oh, Real isolationist it isn't going to happen in Canada that uh, by itself, you know, is is really if the U.S. wants to be only the U.S. isolation and not and stop the trade from Canada, it's going to hurt on both sides of the border. But proportionally, it's it's going to be suicidal for Canada. I mean. It, you know, if you just stopped all U.S., all Canadian goods going into the U.S., bang, you know, you'd have just a total mess. You know, for example, a whole bunch of U.S. homes would freeze in the in the dark. You know, I guess they wouldn't, be, you know, which would therefore the next move would be to, you know, Trump to invade and take Alberta. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, you'd have the automobile industry, you know, you got, um, a huge portion of the parts move back and forth between the Canadian border, you know, um, and uh, the auto production would break down. I mean, you, you can't stop it all instantly. But the problem with Trump is I don't think he'd think it through. And so if you 
slam some door, you just create a catastrophe economically on both sides of the border. Well, um, you mentioned earlier, and it's something I, I did say I wanted to uh, follow up on, and that is that he would, he would change law enforcement and the media uh, in this country. And certainly, I think he would gut the Department of Justice in favor of his own appointees, loyalists. The same thing with the um, you know uh, FBI and and the, um, uh, the tax office, at IRS. He'd make them all his weapons, his instruments, in order to bring pressure against those who would oppose him. Um, but you know, it strikes me that one of his targets, and he's made it clear that it is a target, is the media. And you know, he's attacked the New York Times on a regular basis and the Washington Post. And th those are the two largest, uh, you know, primary news sources in the country, print press. Um, and he's attacked, um, you know, the uh, cable news networks like MSNBC and uh, CNN, for that matter, the BBC, uh, as uh, reporting against him. Okay, so let's assume he will do that. He will do that. And that's probably one of his day one things through the, you know, the Federal Communications Commission and change it around so that they stop these, these news organs. But it strikes me, Ken. Um, that he would want the same thing to happen in Canada. In other words, if a given news media organization in Canada attacked Trump, and it might, because it might not agree with him, and there is First Amendment, there is freedom of, of speech and freedom of the press and freedom of expression in Canada, as far as I know, um, Trump may want to reach out and try to uh, undermine those organizations because they are broadcasting into the United States. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, I don't think he'd reach out. I think he'd just swing, <laughs> bring out the <laughs> sledgehammer, and um, you know. Uh, um, but the Canadian press certainly is is fairly anti-Trump, uh, as is. Yeah, well, but would, Canadian, wouldn't he want to stop yeah. them? Wouldn't he want to have a, an effect on them? Would, for example, if he could stop them broadcasting their opinions into the United States, wouldn't he do that? Um, probably, but uh, you know, an awful lot of Canadians watch just watch U.S. news, like you know, MSNBC broadcasts in Canada. You know, so that's where I learn lots of my stuff. You know, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, you really have, you know, with computers or with, you know, uh, the Internet, people can get news from anywhere in the world. You know, um, I mean, if you just list what news channels can you get, you know, for example, um, you know, you can get Al Jazeera, you know, so if you want to get a, a heavily biased opinion favoring the Palestinians, that's a good one to listen mm -hmm. to. You know, they were pretty, you know, pro-Ukraine, but, you know, they just stopped doing any news about Ukraine the minute, you know, Israel invaded Palestine. Well, I have no idea how, you know, Trump would react. You know, I think in the short run, He'd be, you know, too busy enjoying taking his revenge on people, whether it's Jack Smith or, you know, Tanya Chutkin or, you know, Fanny Willis or, you know, whatever, you know, or a whole bunch of, you know, the past and current senators that are, you know, on the, you know, or congressmen like Adam Schiff. Um, you know, so that he could have his hands full for a while. Um, you know, but I think that, that the disruption to the economy will get his attention fairly quickly. And, and so that, you know, and to, you can keep the economy rolling better by being friendlier with Canada and Mexico. You know, I tend to believe the, you know, his isolationism would probably you know, go from, uh, from, you know, between Russia and Central America. That's, that's his 
market. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a lot of um, Russian media in Lithuania. They had to leave Russia when they published something called Medusa and something called the Beat. Uh, that's B E E T. Um, and uh, they uh, they they publish their opinions about what Putin is doing around the world, and he hates that because they're attacking him. But he can't do much about it because they're in Lithuania. If he could, he would. Um, and so I'm I'm thinking that a, as you said before, there'll be Americans who will be um, you know concerned about him going after them with the revenge initiative, um, including media. Uh, and they would go to Canada, which is the most appealing place, really. It's not just because you're there, by the way. Uh, it is a very... <laughs> I've always felt that Canada is a wonderful country. Um, and so they, they may go there. They may go there, and they may do what Medusa and The Beat are doing out of Lithuania. They may you know, be broadcasting their criticism of Trump, and he will hate that. Um, and, I, and I just wonder whether Canada would be willing to accept Americans and American media uh, and, uh, you know, give them the necessary visas to come. Because, you know, we can't swamp you. We can't, you know, send millions of people across the border. It's not going to work. Um, but there will be those people who will be influential, uh, who would like to come across the border. And I wonder uh, your thoughts about you know, what public opinion, where public opinion would go if when Trump becomes a dictator and does, um, you know, try to do his uh, vengeance program, uh, how Canada will react to that? Well, I would think Canada would, would stand on its head to encourage um, any American that was on Trump's revenge list, you know, or just felt there was a problem to come, please come to Canada. You know, like, he would not have on his hit list, you know, people that are poor and unemployed. You know, it, you know, he may have them round them up and put them in camps, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but um, or that which seems to be one of his more disastrous sounding policies of of take all the, um, you know. Uh, undocumented aliens or whatever they're called, the uh, undocumented citizens. Uh, but, um, you know, we actually have probably um, more people in Canada that were born in the United States than we have people born in any other country. You know, mm. like, like we now have a ton of Americans. I can remember growing up in Alberta when they discovered oil <laughs> and, uh, and that uh, the city of Calgary and the city of Edmonton had uh, a majority uh, of Canadians one day and the next day there was, a, you know, probably 50 percent Americans. <laughs> certainly, certainly the uh, the high school that I went to uh, had um, you know the sons and daughters of of Americans uh, who moved to Canada because the oil industry was so spectacular, um, and um, you know Americans have no trouble fitting in in Canada. Uh, the ones that seem to come to Canada are not like uh, the criticisms people make of American tourists. Like an awful lot of American tourists, when they're traveling to some countries, say they're Canadian. You know, just because, you know, so many American tourists act so boorishly, so entitled, so pushy, you know, that they're not just nice people at all. <laughs> well, that would you be know. the concern. That would be the concern on behalf of... Um, the Canadian government to open the door completely and uh, have have uh, you know Americans come in wholesale uh, because of Trump, because of his policies, because of his autocracies. Um, and I you know, I wonder whether there would be a limit or whether people would welcome them and disregard the fact that some of them are in fact ugly Americans. Um, 
Uh, well, I, you I think you're going to experience that, Ken. I really think that's going to happen. Well, you're going to have isolated groups, like you may have LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. You know, well, if you took, remember the population in the United States is about 10 times that of Canada. Well, if, if you took every LGBTQ person in the United States suddenly panicked and wanted to get out of the U.S., they had to pick somewhere. Well, you know, you'd just be really overloading Canada with with a, a isolated group or a group that can be segregated against so easily, you know, and, and that might push a problem you know, that isn't here in the first place. Mm -hmm. You know, it might create a problem for the existing uh, community. Uh, you know, similarly, the in the Muslim thing, you know, if, uh, you know, if, Muslims have a problem in the U.S., you know, are we going to have, you know, who's going to say they don't want to have Kamala Harris move to Canada? You know, or, uh, you know, one thing is clear from, from this discussion, and that is that um, the border will change if Trump, uh, be, you know, becomes president again. The relationship in terms of trade and culture between the two countries will change. It's hard to predict exactly how, but I feel uh, that from this discussion, there will be changes. And I, I also feel that, you know, even if he is elected, hopefully there'll be a better president after him, hopefully, at some point in time, and things will return to a more normal state of relationship between the U.S. and Canada. Those changes are likely to continue, whatever they are. So we are, you know, on the precipice, uh, if he wins, of a new relationship. It may be very nuanced, but it will be new. Don't you agree? I do. I think overwhelmingly Canada, you know, believes that Americans are not going to be dumb enough to vote him in. <laughs> You said that before. <laughs> no, it, it just it just is astonishing how you know Americans are well educated population. You know how could they be so stupid or not realize the consequence? And and you know because of that, Canadians kind of brush off. But uh, what will the consequences be? Oh my God, we'll have to watch this very carefully because it is entirely possible. Uh, from this point of view, we'll have to follow it as we go closer to Election Day. Thank you very much, Ken. Dr. Ken Rogers, <laughs> you from the North, uh, broadcasting from uh, Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Aloha. Aloha.